Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening and welcome to the Cape Elizabeth School um, Board meeting for August, Thursday, August 22nd. And this is our first meeting of the new school year, 2002-2003. Um, um, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, our first item on the agenda, um, our adjustments to our last meeting, are there any or any comments about? No. Last adjustments to today's agenda. Current agenda. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Okay, are, are there any adjustments? No? Okay. Um, oh, the agenda, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, the approval of our school board minutes from the last meeting, that's what I was thinking of, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, are there any changes or corrections to our last meeting? Okay, and then in communications, um, we all received the annual report on volunteer services um, from Gail Schmader. Are there any comments that anyone would like to make? No? I think just a, you know, thank you to Gail. It was a, it was a good report. It reflects a lot of work and very comprehensive very, very report. comprehensive. She does a good job at that, and we certainly appreciate that good effort. Um, and we all received the college admissions report for the class of 2002. Um, it's nice to see such a, a big selection of colleges all across the country that um, our kids are going to. Um, and our next item on the agenda are comments from the public. Do we have any? No. Um, Recognition? No, we do have, um, I'll take this opportunity also to invite the board to our annual opening of school convocation, which will be held um, Monday morning at the cafetorium, but we do have the um, recognition for years of service and um, that will have to take place during, during that ceremony. So what, what time okay, does that start? That starts at 8 o'clock. And that's at the middle school cafetorium? At the middle school cafetorium. Middle school Pine Cove. <laughs> okay, and then on to our superintendent's report. Uh, you have in your packet notification of resignation from Sue Richmond at the high school um, that occurred uh, after our last meeting. And I'd also um, like to give you an update on the hiring that took place of professional staff over the summer since the, the last meeting. And you have the information and resumes of, of, of the individuals. And I, at this time, would just read the, the names of the people that we have hired and where they will be working for us. Uh, Christine Kennedy will be a district-wide occupational therapist. Uh, Delbert Peavy, a district-wide occupational therapist. Michael O'Brien, high school science. Dawn Pons, high school science. Martin Soule, high school Latin as a two-fifths position. Courtney Farrell, high school math and science. Rachel Guthrie will be a transfer to the high school from the middle school in, um, technology. Cheryl Joyce, middle school, 0.5 special education. Sarah Jordan, uh, who was a um, Permanent sub for us last year in physical ed education will be um, the physical education teacher at the middle school for, for this year. Anne Marie Dion, middle school Spanish one year position. Rebecca Sawyer, um, who has been with us, resigned and reapplied, as a, a change of some personal issues, um, and will be again our special education teacher at Pond Cove. Sarah Safer is part of the job share situation in grade three at Pond Cove that was approved last year. Karen Rand, uh, Pond Cove grade four, one year position. And Eric Nielsen, Pond Cove grade four. The, um, just a, a note that 
we're finding um, in some areas, especially in special education, foreign language, and this year um, added to the list was science, um, it's becoming more and more difficult um, to find people in some of those, those hardship areas. Um, but I, I do thank the administrators for the time that they put into it. They, they spent a good deal of time this summer with interview teams and committees, and I think even doing a little recruiting where it was necessary and phone calling um, to bring these candidates here. And I, I do feel, it's, a, it's as you can tell from the resumes, a, a, a strong group of, of, of teachers. Can I just make one comment about the um, resumes? Um, actually, for those, for all of the resumes that were in our packet, it really is very helpful, and it's wonderful for those that are typed up. Um, you know, the cover sheet that is typed, because it really makes it very easy to read and go through them very quickly. Um, okay. Um, Update on the readiness of the facilities. Pauline, anything you'd like to say about where we stand right now? The buildings will be ready. <laughs> <laughs> our buildings will be ready for the staff on Monday, and they'll be ready for our students on Thursday. Uh, staff has worked very hard, custodial staff, maintenance staff, to spiff up our buildings uh, the, over the summer and we'll be ready. I think we did have um, in the support, the administrative support council met today and, and as always when we get to the end of the year, end of the summer, there's um, just those final things that need to be done and, and I think with some, as the boxes that are in the hallways and those kinds of things that um, seem to be a little bit more this year and, and, and some of that I think is just due to some staffing situations with um, the pool and we have to dedicate two staff members to draining and cleaning the pool uh, which normally isn't done this time of year so that caused us a little it was a little bit more hectic this year and we might think of rescheduling when they do that because with two of our full-time guys spent a significant amount of time cleaning the pool when all these boxes are coming in and being unpacked it made things a little bit more hectic but we will have it ready for, for Monday. Um, you have information in your packet that's just, that is an, um, a requirement of the school board and Nancy has sent and I'm sure will answer any questions about um, planned field trips and fundraising for the school year. So that's for information for you. Um, the overnight trips, I don't, the Kiev and the Chewanki and some of the, the fundraising activities that will be taking place. Also, um, I usually do an update on future direction planning summer work, um, but most of that work this summer was done by um, Sarah with her curriculum and professional development group and Nancy and Jeff are leading a group that began the work on uh, supervision and evaluation from the future direction plan that work began last spring but there was a full day meeting this summer so I'm going to have them each one of them speak to you a little bit just as an update as to what happened in those those particular groups related to future direction planning so Sarah would you like to start With regard to um, the, the work of the Professional Development Committee, uh, most of that w work took place at the very end of the year last year, and it was guided by the, the goals and the action plan of the Future Direction Plan. Um, we created a three-phase developmental continuum, which is a tool that will help us to um, both plan professional development, um, improve the system that we currently have, and also evaluate in the future um, what were the goals that we set and how are we doing in terms of uh, moving toward those goals. Uh, the goals that we set for this coming year based on the continuum are um, characteristics and opportunities. We'd like to improve um, uh, also the content is another goal, improve the content of the uh, workshops and sessions and opportunities for teachers. And also communicating about the opportunities with professional development. How do we communicate between and among buildings? Um, so those were the three goals. 
from that we developed an action plan around offering a variety of sessions for teachers throughout the course of the year next year at this coming year um, there'll be workshops um, on local assessment on implementing learning results um, on developing assessments as well as on um, differentiated instruction uh, making sure we're meeting the needs of all students in terms of how we um, think about instructional strategies um, also collegial sharing sessions some of the data that we collected from teachers was they wanted more of an opportunity to hear from their colleagues around how they'd spent their um, sabbaticals and conferences that they've attended so we'll have some collegial sharing sessions um, reflective practice groups and professional reading groups those are all different kinds of opportunities that will be offered throughout the course of, of next year. And that helps us both to achieve the uh, goal of around characteristics and opportunities in both in the content as well. And for our goal around communication, we're working to create a newsletter for staff members so that they'll know sort of what's going on and um, sharing information about who's attended what conference or books that people have read. So that will, that's the area of professional development. With regard to curriculum, again, our work this summer um, was guided by the goals and the action plan of the Future Direction Plan. We met for three days, met two days uh, at the end of the school year and one day just recently, um, last week. And we spent uh, quite a bit of time um, increasing the team members' awareness around um, learning results and the local assessment system so that they could um, make decisions around what we'll be doing with curriculum based on that understanding and the connection between the two of those. Um, after gaining some background knowledge in those two pieces, they then use that to develop a draft of a framework for a curriculum document that would be a consistent format across the, um, all the grade levels as well as all the content areas. Um, so we have that draft and we'll be gathering feedback um, about that framework and then revising the current draft and then making recommendations to the district leadership team around what that document should look like. And then we use that information to help us move to um, looking at utilizing the curriculum and assessment database that I shared with you last year was the um, utilizing technology to, as a way to communicate and document what we're doing um, with curriculum and who's doing what when. So um, using the information about the curriculum document and how will that translate into the curriculum database? And is there another sort of layer of that document, of that database that we need to be looking at? And then finally, we developed, um, spent some time looking at um, developing, putting into place a plan for Tuesday, for the first part of Tuesday morning, um, which is the second teacher day where um, we'll be, we've developed a process to look at uh, summary data from the maps that teachers created last year, the curriculum mapping documents, and how then that will help us to identify um, gaps, overlaps, and issues or questions that we need to address in the current curriculum. So that's something teachers will be involved in on Tuesday. Thank you. And Nancy. Well, for supervision and evaluation, we have this wonderful team. And our team is made up of, there are two representatives from each building. Jeff and I are both on the team. Um, Shari Robinson represents the association, and Susan represents the school board. We started our work somewhat last April, but really got into it in um, this August. And we had a wonderful collegial dialogue, discussion, and energetic exchange of passionate differing ideas about supervision and evaluation uh, from that day. It seemed to be a conversation we needed to have, though, because we know our work is critically important. And we did come to agreement on some basic principles. And looking at this, we are really committed to connecting our work to support and encourage the professional development committee work because we are really attaching that to that goal of attracting and retaining the best qualified teachers that we can. And as Tom mentioned, um, he was at the opening part of our meeting with us, that we are also really focused to come up with an about supervision and evaluation plan that results in better student learning. And if it doesn't give us information to inform student learning and how we're doing that, we need to keep reworking the plan because that's what it's all about. It's not about 
just judging people and doing things. We're really trying to guide people and make sure that we come out with the best possible practices and learning that we can. So we talked about several things we did agree upon. Um, we came to some principles that we've agreed upon. We've basically agreed upon that the clinical supervision model, which is a very structured model with pre-conferences, observations, and post-conferences, really does work fairly well for our probationary contracted teachers. In fact, it gives us a systematic way to give feedback and structured information to them. And that's during those two years that is most critical for us to be in frequently looking for things measured against what we will determine as effective teaching in Cape Elizabeth. And uh, we felt that structure for supervision evaluation was quite effective for them. We're looking at for continuing contracted teachers, and that's after you've been here for two years, you go on to continuing contract, that we really focus on the goal of professional growth, once again, leading to improved student learning, um, giving a system that will give us a chance to come back, and if I begin to weave from that course a little bit, that there's a way to get me back on course and to do that. Um, but it's also about really encouraging continual growth and learning with teachers. So that will then be modeled and students will do that. We will be an automatically a learning community if we do this correctly. We talked about some particular things that we're looking for. We know we don't want teachers to be evaluators. Teachers need um, to be, they can be peer coaches, they can be mentors, but the evaluation um, part really belongs to the administrator and that's their job. But sometimes um, with teachers, we're still trying to work that out as part of our discussion because administrators aren't expert in everything. I stand before you as a fairly confident person, but I am not fluent in either French or Spanish, for instance. So when I'm observing and working with those teachers, I might need some help with some of that language proficiency. So those kinds of things that we're looking for to work out a way that people would be comfortable with that. And we really want to focus on developing that common language for effective teaching. So we're taking our documents that we have, looking at what we have there, what we need to rework and reconstruct. We have committed ourselves to a tentative deadline, and I stand before you today as this is a tentative deadline of March 2003 to have a document to present to everybody um, so that we can really get this in effect for the next school year, that we know precisely what the structures are that we're going to follow. We have divided, for the month of September, we've divided ourselves into two subcommittees. One subcommittee is going to work on the framework, sort of the process, the structure of the supervision evaluation processes, things that could work out timelines, responsibilities, um, the difference, fine-tuning those differences between probationary and, con and continuing contracted teachers. And then the other committee is working on the domains. How do we define effective teaching? What are those areas we really want people to design professional development plans in and around? And what are the areas that we really want to look at those probationary contracted teachers in? We have um, looked at quite a bit of research. We've shared more research with one another. We have decided that a way, since this so impacts everyone's working, what we decided as a committee, um, Jeff is our secretary, and he did a wonderful job because he gave us these three pages of notes. It was a very productive day. And um, what the committee will do is just like other committees do in our, we have a meeting October 1st of the whole committee. The first thing we'll do is we'll read over these and decide to accept them or amend them. And then they will go out to the entire staff so that they are continually aware of what we're talking about. Um, we are publishing the names of the people who are on the committee. So if they have something they want those committee members to bring up, or if they want to come to a meeting themselves, that they certainly could do that. Um, as I said, we are really committed to developing a process that is meaningful, that is manageable, and that really is focused on the end result will be improved student learning. Susan and Jeff are both members of that committee, so if I've left any, out, out any critical information, I know they'll jump in. Um, I, no, I think you've covered it beautifully, and I think um, what you were saying at the end was that we're, we really want to do a good job of communicating this as we go, because um, we know supervision and evaluation doesn't make people feel warm and fuzzy, <laughs> and, and people, I think, are nervous, and so I think we wanted to rope as many people in as we can as we move forward and make sure that they feel that they're involved in the process. Right. And I thought it was great that the group identified that early. Mm -hmm. great. Nancy, I had a question. Sure. Um, are there some, or is there some thinking about, I understand sort of focusing on teaching 
competencies, and that's a that's a key area, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, things that define excellence in teaching, let's say. But is there also kind of a a core set of um, criteria or uh, characteristics or whatever attributes, let's say, that people will re would receive feedback on that would be common across the whole organization? When we say, you know, for example, um, attitude or um, or uh, resourcefulness, or you know, th you know th sort of attributes that we wish everyone in the you know in, in a in an excellent organization or in an excellent school district, there are certain key attributes that you want people to have feedback on. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, regardless of who they are or what position or they're, they're in. We didn't, the we didn't talk that? about those specifically in that way, and, and Susan and Jeff, I would invite you to clarify this further, but from what I'm reading with the teachers, I think you will hear some of those words mentioned, and we'll talk about them, but it will be in relationship to how that has an impact on the task before them, um, how, what the delivery of instruction is, what the um, assessment processes are, what the professional development activities are. Um, I don't, at this time, we did not talk about those being standalone issues, but in some of the research material that we've read, they are embedded in performance of the work um, that is there, but we have not discussed at this point um, having those as separate items. I would, there are a couple of models that we're looking at toward the sort of beginning of the springboards, I think, and both of them actually include, um, they're not strictly limited to things that teachers do in classrooms. They would mm -hmm. do something right. in another classroom. Um, there's different language that people use to describe that, and we have to sort of right. do that and other kinds of things. But I think that gets kind of... It does, exactly. Just, you know, just being a, just being a uh, you know, being a good, uh, 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 community or educational community citizen or you know whatever that means but there are sort of these certain general um, I keep say, using the word attributes because I think mm -hmm. that's really the best word general attributes that we would hope that um, that everyone demonstrates regardless you know positive attitude and whatever resourcefulness I think particularly in this time of um, you know budget cuts and economic mm -hmm. issues and so on. And, and, and Jeff is right. If, and, and if anybody wants to look at some of the research that we have, I know Susan has copies of it and we'd be glad to share that. We've also put it um, on file in Sarah's office as well too. And I think you will see some of those things in there. One of the things people are very interested in, which does get to the resourcefulness in that education community member, is really looking when we get, especially in continuing contracted teachers, to get more into some peer coaching, mentoring, um, peer feedback loops that automatically, once again, as I was saying, those, the attributes aren't isolated, but they're part of, you cannot do this process without having those attributes. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thanks. And the last item under my report, uh, on the Education Foundation, I've included in your packet a bright green a letter that was sent out to all staff, and I'm happy to say we've had, uh, the foundation has, has had an excellent response to the request for grant proposals. I think a total of 19 grants have been submitted and they're in the process of being reviewed. Um, I think the, the figure for the request was just over $50,000 as I added it up quickly, um, and the foundation has approximately $15,000 in, in grant monies that they will be awarding um, this fall. Um, so this is, a, I think, a real big step for the foundation to, to actually now be in a process um, where they are uh, awarding some grants for, for projects uh, that teachers have submitted. Okay. Um, and now we can move on to the principal's reports. Nancy? Back up again. At least I had an opportunity to go back and switch and get the other notes. Um, we are excited about the new school year, and we are forever faithful that our building will be ready. Um, and moving along after that comment, um, <laughs> today we had um, new student orientation, and most of our students were able to come. A couple of them are still in the moving process, so they were not able to be there. We are, at this time, we have a few people that are still on the cusp of completing all of their registrations, but we believe we are welcoming 34 new students to the middle school. This is a year when we anticipated uh, being around 
five seventy five or so because we were there were th approximately thirty less students in our incoming fifth grade than in our outgoing eighth grade well we are at about five ninety eight so um, we're a little bit up from that um, but a little a middle school likes nothing more than a few more people because we like to do things in groups so uh, we're ready and excited about that we also still haven't sifted all the way through who actually perhaps may have moved away we've heard from 12 families but there may have been other people who have moved away so it may be different we'll have better numbers for you when we meet in September um, but we are excited about that um, this year on the only thing that's really different in our trend is we have 11 new eighth graders, and that's unusual that we would have that many new students coming into the eighth grade. Uh, but that's been our biggest group so far, so um, that's just the way it is. Today, uh, Gary Lenoy and his team of Jason and Ginger and Beverly Bisbee, who's our iBook, our Milti team leader, the main um, learning technology initiative. Uh, we have 17 students who are in to be part of our I-team. And these are incoming seventh graders who uh, worked with their laptops today, and they're going to be part of our resource to help and make sure that laptops go well uh, throughout the day. Um, all members of our seventh grade team participated in training this summer, either at the MAC Leadership Workshop in Yarmouth, which was a week-long workshop, or through the um, in-service that was provided by the main laptop initiative. They also worked with Gary Lenoy with the day at the end of June when the laptops arrived and he was able to meet with them. They came for a working lunch and he went over with them and so they've had their laptops for the summer. Through Beverly Bisbee, we found out that Gary was one of the few, if at that, and at that time, the only technology coordinator who was organizing something to go over those with people, to help them take them out of the boxes, show them the first steps, the few of the particularities. A lot of, in a lot of other schools, they were just handed them and said, see you in September. So um, when Beverly went to some team training this summer, she was very proud of the fact that she could show that as a system, we were really trying to make an effort to make sure that this is going well. Beverly and I also had a meeting with one parent this summer who was going to help us organize a parent kind of support group. We don't know if it's a support group, an advisory group, a steering committee group um, kind of thing, but really ways to get information out about how students are using the laptops, what they're doing. We hope to and we plan to invite you to a workshop um, probably in the fall sometime where the students will come and take for those of you who can attend through some of the things that they have learned. We are going to use our students as messengers and as part of the information about how this is becoming an instructional tool. But our teachers, the seventh grade team is really doing a great job with that. They are on September 6th. All of our students in the middle school will take the degrees of reading power test um, at different times for different grade levels. The seventh grade is going to do that first thing. And then from 9.30 on to the rest of the day, they're doing laptop registration. Each one of these has to be registered. The students have to go through an orientation program for this um, and all of those things. But they're devoting the day to that laptop and getting it off on the right foot so that then we can um, use them in our instruction. There will be glitches along the way and things like that. I think most importantly, certainly the 17 students who are in today were excited about uh, working with them. I know the teachers are, and it just looks forward to being a wonderful year of teaching and learning with the laptops. I don't know how much longer it will last than a year, but we're going with it for a year, so and we look forward to that. Um, I think the other thing just to to let you know, uh, several groups um, came in and worked this summer on other curriculum projects as well too. Our world language team adding more to their work. Uh, the seventh and eighth grade teachers specifically went and did a lot of work with websites and website creation um, to use the laptops and to make use of the mobile lab. So they were very excited about that because that connects them to a whole other resource um, beyond what we were able to offer. The fifth grade team came in and they've worked on some grade level assessments in writing that they're very excited about. Um, and they spent a day this summer working on them. The other day they were in and they've been revising them and refining them as well too. So um, they're very committed to that kind of work. And I think we're looking forward to a great school year to the start. It's hard to believe the summer's over, but um, we're excited for next Thursday and to get underway. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Um, Pine Cove, Tom.
Good evening. I, I think the last time we met formally, back in June, the building principals proudly reported on the accomplishments we had made and energy we have. And you're hearing about it again, which is true. I just wanted to follow up on a remark Tom made about what happens with the custodians and the maintenance people in between times. In each building, every stick of furniture comes out of the room is put in the hall, the, the uh, classroom is cleaned, and at Pond Cove, you know, that's quite a project. So I want to thank the staff for getting that done. They've been hard at it all summer, and I appreciate they're doing that. Same thing for the maintenance staff. Um, again, to follow up on a remark Tom made about the hiring we've done uh, in June and over the summer, I'm really pleased with the quality of the applicants we've had and uh, the selection process. I'm very happy with that. We read in the paper that maybe the pool is down. We had a lot of applications for the positions at Pond Cove. We just concluded our third day at Pond Cove with a project we've been working on for a few years of doing a, a gentle but valuable assessment for kids reading and writing level entering grade one. Every uh, available family with a student entering grade one has a scheduled time to come in right before the billing, uh, beginning of school. And they not only make contact with the reading teachers and um, some of the teachers do the assessment, but it gives us a little leg up in evaluating the status of each of these kids so we can get started with instruction in a good way and gives us some baseline data about where we're going. It's been a very successful project. Other meetings that have taken place recently, now the custodians have done their work. There was a two-day math meeting, K through four, to take a look at exactly where we stand with the logistics and standards of everyday math. Earlier in the summer, there was a, a grade three got together to uh, mesh their reading assessment with a great one that uh, grade four did the year before. Um, there's been team planning. And a lot of these activities have gone on through the impetus of the flex time which is new for um, the whole district. It, it looks like, what I can gather already, flex time is going to be very uh, exciting and successful at all three buildings. Teachers just seem to have more energy. They have more options about how to spend their time. Some people did half in the summer or two days, and other people are kind of banking it. And they have talked to me, and they're talking to Sarah about their plans for using that time wisely. Um, we've heard a fair amount, too, about professional development. Our lesson study project last year convinced me that the most successful professional development connects teachers and material and classrooms right in the classroom. And uh, we're going to continue that theme by broadening lesson study, I think, throughout the building. And on a personal note, le lesson study prompted me to apply to go on an, a Fulbright Memorial Fund educational tour in Japan in October, and I'm going to do that. And one of my obligations besides learning about lesson study is to represent Pond Cove community and schools with questions that um, school boards and teachers and parents may have about the educational system in Japan. It's quite different. Uh, similarities and differences and things we, we may be able to learn from their system. So if you have any input for me, please stop by or email or call me, and I'd be happy to try to get the answer to those questions. The big event, I think, for Pond Cove in middle school this summer, though, is the uh, R, the two new playgrounds. I, I hope you've seen them. The new, new playground at the very colorful one at the middle school and a large, even more colorful one at uh, Pond Cove. They tell me, since I'm out there bugging them almost every day, those will be ready to go by opening day. And to the Pond Cove students out there who have asked your parents to call me or, or have emailed me about, can you all use the new playground Yes. I think there's some concern that we might say it's only for first or second. It's for everybody. We'll adjust the schedule, and I think they're just going to love it. That um, project, by the way, the town support, parent involvement, community involvement for fundraising has just blossomed into a, two playgrounds, and a third will be on the way that the whole community can be very proud of. Questions? Any comments or questions for Tom? But uh, please, please follow up on the, um, on the Japanese education thing. The school board role there is quite different from yours, and it might be interesting for you to compare and contrast what you do. Thank you. OK, the high school, Jeff. <clears throat> I didn't look at the numbers um, today. Um, I have seen sort of a sort of a rolling figure. We expected to open doors with about 550 students. I think we're going to be right around there, give or take a few. 
Um, we're learning about some kids coming in, some kids, some kids leaving. I think so far we've got a between transfers in, transfers out, we've got a net increase from that of about plus eight students as of today. So we're going to be 550. We're going to be in the neighborhood because uh, there may well be, as, Nan as uh, Nancy suggested, some people that we don't know about. But that, that's sort of where we are in terms of that. Um, there was a lot of time spent um, hiring. Um, teachers both uh, in the spring, late spring, and then some in the summer as well. Um, in the end, um, I'm very happy with the people that we have hired, and I think um, students will be very, very happy as well and have wonderful experiences. Um, I will echo uh, what Tom said about um, some positions in particular being difficult to fill. Um, we got lucky, um, and the reputation of the school district carried us on a, on a, on a, in a few of the, the positions. Um, I'm glad I'm not in these times. Um, I'm glad I'm principal at Cape Elizabeth High School and not some other places where I'm sure principals are struggling with no applications um, or very, very, very few applications for some of the positions in foreign language, special ed and science in particular. Math is also difficult, not quite as difficult as, as those, but those are sort of the top three. But in the end, we are happy. I do want to mention one person in particular who is not a new hire, but I'm particularly excited about uh, welcoming from Scotland Maureen Durans, um, who is going to be teaching um, English. Um, Hannah Jones, our English teacher who's been with us for quite for a number of years, is in Scotland in Maureen's uh, Marine School, and I think it's going to be a wonderful, mic, uh, wonderful fit for here and for there, I am sure, as well. And we look forward to meeting Maureen and, uh, and, and then hearing back from Hannah when she comes back from Scotland. Um, this Sunday, there is a, um, some of you, if you have, our parents of ninth graders, I I'm not sure there is any. Oh, yes, yes. Um, there is um, sort of an unofficial school, non-school event uh, that's happening at Fort Williams Park. It's being organized, spearheaded by the Cape Coalition in cooperation with the school, um, where all the incoming ninth graders are being invited to Fort Williams for a picnic um, with some senior, well, some upper class buddies that, they're, that they've sort of been um, matched with. Um, and so we hope that that helps um, the transition from the middle school to the high school. Um, and that some of those relationships, we hope that all, but we certainly hope that at least some significant number really do result in some meaningful support and relationships. I just want to talk very, uh, for the rest of my time, just, just mention um, one thing that I, I am very much looking forward to this year. It's a little daunting, but I, find, I think it's going to be very exciting. Um, and it has to do with, with an area that's going to be a focus of a whole lot of teacher work this year. Um, some of you, those of you who have been teachers or know teachers well, may be aware that teaching is a traditionally, particularly at the high school level, I think more than other levels, a very isolating activity. Um, no matter how personally congenial and, co and collegial and cooperative people are, time is, time is very, very, very stretched thin. Um, in fact, some people who write about uh, the nature of teachers' lives talk about teachers as entrepreneurs within sort of bigger, within bigger institutions or teachers as independent contractors who work within, within a particular school. Um, this year, there are two factors that are happening at the high school that will, I think, help us to reduce that sense of isolation um, significantly and to work much more towards being a collaborative professional community. Um, one of the factors is that the word collaborative and cooperation and professional learning community is repeated again and again and again and again and again in the future directions plan, in our mission and our vision and those sorts of things. Um, and so that's one part that's, that's happening. Um, and the second thing is that the state, um, although one can quibble about some aspects of what they're doing, and I certainly would as well, um, the state has mandated that all high schools have in place by the end of this year, by the spring of this year, a comprehensive local assessment system, which will then be implemented fully uh, for students in this year's eighth grade class. So students in this year's eighth grade class, according to the law, unless it is changed, will not graduate from any high school in the state unless the school can certify that they have met satisfactorily uh, the content standards of the main learning results. Um, a huge core of that comprehensive local assessment system, which is being developed locally, district to district, is the implementation of common assessments um, in courses uh, in the high school. Um, and last year, if you remember, we had some, some discussions around budget time about hiring two study hall monitors to make possible um, some common planning time by each of the departments at the high school. We have hired those study hall monitors. 
Um, there are, uh, the schedule worked out nicely, it worked out um, much more painlessly than I anticipated so that each department will have a common planning time, which will be very much used for helping to build a professional learning community around the focused target of being able to have in place a huge component of a, of a local assessment system by the end of this year in the form of common assessments, a number of common assessments in every single course in the high school that we will develop and pilot this year and cooperatively and co collaboratively score and then to begin to discuss, okay, uh, what do those results tell us about our instruction? What can we learn from one another? How can we do better? Where are the weaknesses we need to work on and what do we do well? Um, so I'm really excited about that um, and I, I, it's, it's going to be an issue that in my principal's reports I'm going to be, be sort of a broken record, I think, about the work that, that's going on in the high school. Um, there is, a, there is a, a hill that we're at the bottom of, we're looking up, but we have a lot of work, um, a lot of assessments that individual teachers have in place that we can draw from in building a system. Um, and we have a lot of teachers who are very excited about the opportunity for really just about the first time in their professional lives to work together systematically, um, collaboratively. And I will say in conclusion about that, that it does seem to me that this initiative um, really does have the potential uh, to benefit the most the students who struggle the most in school um, because they will be we will be looking at the same applying the same standards with them and so we are going to have to fig answer the question how do we reach those students successfully um, and it's clear to me that working together um, on an instructional challenge given a set of student results in front of us is the way to is the way to do that so I'm very excited about that for a lot of different reasons. Um, I, think those, I think everybody will benefit, but including teachers, but I think that group of students who are in the middle and, and struggling and uh, stand to benefit the most. Thank you. That sounds great, Jeff. I mean, you know, that's all of our goals, to reach all students, and that's what we keep talking about. It's great. No promises, no guarantees, but I, I, I think the direction is pretty clear that that's the way we'll be heading. Thank you. I think we can move on to the committee reports. Um, the Finance Committee, Elaine? Uh, the Finance Committee uh, met prior to the school board meeting at 6.30. Um, we signed a variety of warrants and uh, reviewed the appropriation report. We also took a look at uh, three uh, different leases that we'll need to have motions for to approve. Uh, two of the leases were on technology equipment and one was on a maintenance truck that was approved in our budget. Um, do we do these currently under now or do we should under, do them? We'll do it under new business. Oh, we do them down there. Okay. So we took a look at those and then we also um, decided at this meeting that there would be um, the creation of a capital uh, construction fund allocating some money from our undesignated balance fund from this prior year um, into that fund and we will be voting on that under unfinished business also. Okay. Thank you. Um, the policy committee, Susan? Uh, the first meeting of the policy committee for um, this school year will be on Wednesday, September 4th at um, 12 noon in the Jordan Conference Room and that will be the first time we will have met so we have nothing to report <laughs> to date. Okay, thank you. Um, and the building committee. Actually, we just met on August 15th, last Thursday, and this was the first time that we received um, actual dollar amounts for the renovation project and the building project at Pine Cove. Um, the committee was surprised to see the numbers, which the high school um, is coming in at 9.2 million and Pine Cove at 2.4 million. Um, now you have to understand that the renovation for the high school, it, the one thing that we have addressed the architect to do was to encompass everything. Um, so this includes um, a lot of site work. It includes a lot of the things that the staff has asked for in the high school. Our job now as a building committee is to look at all of the item details um, and get that number way down. 
I mean, we, we all were nervous when we heard it, and we know that it's high, um, and we will get it where it needs to be um, for the high school. Um, so I just want to emphasize that everything is included in that number, um, and it will come down. Uh, over the next two weeks, um, we will meet with the architect with a smaller group, um, Tom, Elaine, um, Paulina Portria, and Ernie McVeigh, and myself um, to discuss, and Jeff, to discuss those item costs to have something to present at our next building committee meeting, um, which will be on September 26th at 7 o'clock. Um, and next, we can move to unfinished business. And I don't think we have any unfinished business. OK, new business. First thing under new business is um, consideration of the superintendent's recommendation for athletic fee positions for fall. Um, in front of you, you have um, some high school um, recommendations, new high school coaches, David Weatherby, boys cross country, Erica Grubbs, freshman girls feel like, did I say that right, Jeff? I think that's supposed to be Erica Stump. Stump. I think Stump. it was a, a typing error when it was sent over. Okay. Erica Sorry. Stump, <laughs> freshman girls feel like, who was also a, a, a new teacher at the, high, at the high school. Brianna Roberts, JV girls field hockey, and Mark Tinkham, girls soccer assistant. Uh, returning high school coaches, uh, Don Burke for freshman boys soccer. Okay. Next, um, consideration for the super. Oh. oh. You need to take action on that. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay. Do we have a motion sure. for the recommendations for the athletic fee? Um, George? I'd move that the board um, approve the superintendent's recommendation to fill the co curricular fee positions for a year, school year 2002 2003, as just presented. A second? It's athletic fee position. What did I say? Oh, I'm sorry. I was moving. I moved down to the wrong line. <laughs> Athletic B positions. I think Thank so. you, Susan. Second. Okay. Um, questions or comments, um, Kevin? Question. Um, just as to uh, form and process. In the past, with new high school coaches, we've usually received a brief summary of their background, um, and there is. So far as I know, unless I missed it, that didn't happen with this group. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to oppose the motion based on that. But we'll get that information. With in the I'll talk to, to Keith Weatherby. There usually is a background information on new coaches you run. Okay. Um, okay. All in favor? Six zero. Okay. And then we can move on for the recommendation to fill co-curricular um, positions. And you have in front of you a list of a numerous number of co-curricular nominations, um, advisor positions, um, department heads, and also um, on a second sheet um, recommendation for uh, Wendy Durza was to continue as, as the webmaster. Okay. Do we have a motion? Elaine? Um, I move that we approve the co-curricular nominations as recommended by um, superintendent. Okay, a second. Susan? Um, are there questions or comments? No? All in favor? Six, zero. Okay, and next, um, consideration of the lease, lease purchase agreement for computer technology. Do we have a motion? Um, I move that we approve the uh, recommendation for the lease uh, agreement on the technology equipment. Okay, second. Jennifer? Um, all in favor? Okay, six zero. Um, and lastly, consideration of lease purchase agreement for a truck. Motion? Elaine? <laughs> I move that we approve the uh, Recommendation for the lease purchase agreement on the tables with the truck. Okay. Second. Susan. 
Um, questions or comments? None? All in favor? 6 0. Okay. Um, we have the undesignated fund. Oh, that's right. Uh, should have been, we should have listed modified, modified to, okay. to bring that forward. Um, so I would. Do you want to make a motion? Sure. Okay. Um, I move that we approve the creation of a capital construction fund using money from our undesignated fund balance from this year. Okay. A second. Susan? Do we need a dollar amount? Need a, dollar amount. a dollar amount. Okay. The, uh, the, the transfer uh, into the capital construction fund would be in the sum of $200,000. Okay. And second. Susan, all in favor? Six zero. Okay. That concludes everything, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we can move on to dates of meetings to remember. Um, the policy subcommittee meeting will be Wednesday, September 4th in the Jordan Conference Room at noon. The finance subcommittee, uh, Tuesday, September 10th, 6.30 in the Jordan Conference Room. Um, our next school board meeting, Tuesday, September 10th right after the Finance Subcommittee at 7.30. And the Building Committee meeting Thursday, September 26th at uh, 7 p.m. in the Jordan Conference Room. And um, that concludes our meeting for tonight. Um, so I think we need a motion to end this meeting. George? So moved. Um, second. Susan? All in favor? 6-0.